here to read our weekly announcements. Amen. Celebration time. Save the day. The GMB church family, get ready to celebrate the birthday of our very own leader and shepherd of this house, Pastor Dennis J. Robinson. This birthday celebration will take place at the North Little Rock Community Center on October 29th, which is the last Saturday of the month, at 4 p.m. There will be plenty of food, so you can come on an empty stomach. There will be fun, great fellowship, and door prizes. Please invite your family and friends to help celebrate and shower love to our pastor, your pastor, your pastor, your pastor, Pastor Dennis J. Rogers Sr. May God continue to bless each and every one of you is our prayer. This is coming from the Pastor's Aid Committee. In conjunction with the Pastor Appreciation Month 2022 in Greater New Broadway, what does it mean to be a pastor? A pastor is someone with the authority to lead religious services. Pastors lead church services and help others worship to God. Pastors are, uh, a pastor is a religious title used mostly in Christian churches. The pastor is a leader within a church who has been ordained and therefore given the authority to conduct religious services, marry couples, dedicate babies, and preach eulogies at, at funerals or homecoming celebrations. What is the role of a pastor? The duties of a pastor include preaching sermons to their congregation, organizing charitable activities and church events, and meeting with members of the congregation to help them strengthen their faith or overcome significant life changes. So we say, Happy Pastor Appreciation Month to you, Pastor Rogers. We pray for you, we appreciate you, we thank you, and we love you. Since Pastor Appreciation Month is for the whole month, let's stand right now. And let's clap for him. And he's doing it. Standing on base. He works hard. He works hard. Sister Adrian Furlow is coming in her own way with special with special presentations. So let's give her a hand as she comes. And these have been your TV um, announcements and directives. Amen. Obedience 
a heart of compliance and submission to him. R is for righteousness by which you live and are blessed. Greater New Bible Way, Church of God in Christ. Continue to go with God, Pastor Rogers. God will bless you real good. May God bless you and keep you is our prayer. Amen. Wise, all minutes. 
the wise place. We thank God for you all. Standing behind our ministers and elders and our pastor. We can't thank and appreciate you enough of the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. May God continue to go with each and every one of you is our prayer. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you.
This award is presented to those who have contributed the most of their community during the year. You have gone out of your way to help others to achieve this educational You have unfailingly cheer, upbeat, and a positive, in, positive even when you've been presented with challenges. Additionally, you have been you have organized, um, been organized, efficient, and you have worked hard on things that are most important to you. It has been most impressive what you have accomplished, especially when you and others have struggled with limited resources. All in all, you have earned this recognition because of your un untiring and unwavering efforts to ensure the needs of others can be met. This makes you our humanitarian champion. Sister Franklin, this letter brings you our warmest congratulations. It speaks highly of how well you and your work are perceived in the community. It is a positive contribution that deserves our recognition. And I'm proud to say that you are a valued member of our church and our community. Yours in Christ, Elder D. J. Uh, Dennis J. Rogers, Senior Pastor, Freddie and Bible Boy Church of God in Christ. God has an anointed word. God has an encouraging word. 
amen for you on today. Those of you that made your way out to this house today, it's just amazing how just one word from God will heal everyone where they're hurting on today. I'm grateful today, amen. We're also celebrating another group of people that are here today. Amen. And those that have completed our new members' orientation on today. Come on, let's celebrate. Stand, amen. Those members, amen, that completed the new members' orientation. Amen. There's one, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, let's celebrate her today. Amen, amen. The Lord is added to the church as well. Amen. So we give him praise and we give him honor. As a matter of fact, stay tuned until the very end. God has some great things. Amen. But it's time for us to hear from heaven. Amen. And I want you to set your station, set your dials. Amen. This way. Amen. God is getting ready to speak to our hearts on today. I'm so happy. Amen. I'm so grateful, so honored. Amen. To have the privilege today to stand. Amen. Present, amen, this one that is getting ready to come, amen, to this sacred desk. Yes, yes he as all of them are special to me, amen, but this one, amen, we share the same blood. Right. I'm thankful, I'm grateful, because listen, saints, I don't take it for granted, amen, because my family is here serving with me. Amen. God could easily call him to go out and start, amen, and do his thing, amen, and ministry, amen. But I'm grateful, I'm happy, amen, that they're standing with me, amen. arm in arm and shoulder to shoulder to help amen. us, amen, carry out, amen, what our father began, amen. Some 45 years ago, amen, I believe we're getting ready to celebrate 46 years, amen, that the Greater New Bible Way have been in existence. What an honor and a privilege, amen, to present to most of you and introduce to a few the one that is getting ready to come, amen, and preach this great gospel today. None other, amen, than my brother, amen, the elder Thaddeus B. Rogers, amen. Thank God for him, thank God for his family as well, amen. After our choir, amen, have rendered a song, Amen. I'm going to ask if you would stand all over the building, amen, and receive this anointed man of God, Elder Rogers. Come on, let's receive our choir. For the strength
And he's letting you know I'm a strong God. Mighty to save, mighty to heal, mighty to deliver. He's a strong God. Father, we pray, God, on this morning, God, that you would send forth your word. God, we pray, God, right now, God, that nobody's coming would be in vain. That you would change lives, God, that you would send them in another direction, God, a direction toward you on today, oh God. Use me, Lord. I'm available, God. Word my mouth, oh God. Don't let me go farther than you would have me go. And touch, deliver. We come against Satan and every trap, every distraction, every device that he's, amen, coming, that he's setting up, God. We come against it now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let us all say amen. I am a strong God, amen. Would you turn to Psalm 37? Certainly, I give honor to God, amen, who is the head of my life, to my dear, loving, uh, my pastor on this morning. Can y'all clap for him again? Yeah. To our first lady on this morning. Don't you look beautiful? Amen. She has danced herself a, a, a while on this morning. Amen, amen. Thank God. Thank God for my mother on this morning. Amen. God bless you. To our head deacon, our head mother, amen, to our head missionary, and to all of you, amen. And yes, I want to acknowledge, amen, Deacon Jackson on this morning. In his absence, amen. Deacon, if you're watching, if somebody from his family is watching, just know that your absence is felt on this morning. But amen, we pray for you. And last but not least, amen, to my own dear wife, amen. Sister Latanya Rogers, amen. And to all my babies. All five. Y'all don't even know what has happened on this week, amen. What's, what's been happening for weeks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm thankful to God for where I stand right now. Psalm 37. Do you have it? Yes, sir. Amen. Let's read. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Yeah. Five, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. I, I'll go to the seventh verse. Amen. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him. Yeah. Fret not thyself because of him who doeth prosper. Amen. Who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. But the key verse on this morning, 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he, God, delights in his way. Amen. Amen. Can we read that one again? Amen. Can we read that together? Come on, let's read. The steps of a Those that are standing, you may be seated. Amen. Amen. Just for amen. Just for a few moments, I hope a few moments. Uh, I want to speak on a step in the right direction. My dear brothers and sisters in this present day world, uh, many people take steps, amen, to distinguish themselves uh, or define themselves, if you will. Uh, in effort to stand out. Everybody want to kind of stand out. How do they do it? Uh, it's just my take on it, but either they do it by altering uh, in part or completely altering themselves altogether, right? Altering their bodies, altering their looks, amen. Today your hair can be short and curly and 
by Friday date, date night or church on Sunday, it can be, amen, as long as down to the back of your knee. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just making an observation on this morning. Amen. Don't shoot the messenger. Still some take a trip to see Dr. Miami in Miami, Florida, right? And they go to get enhanced, right? They go to get uh, uh, upgraded, if you will. Some even go take trips overseas to the Dominican Republic. Go down to Brazil. I know where y'all going. Amen. Yet there are a growing number, amen, listen, that completely transform or transgender. They go to the extreme, amen, to distinguish, to define, or stand out in some kind of way, right? Amen. They take those steps, amen. Uh, some people even take steps to distance, separate, or stand off, if you will. They keep a serious and deep and, and impenetrable look, giving the impression of a strong ego or pride. Since a happy face and bright eyes are inviting and makes one seem approachable, the scowl and the tight eyes and the avoidance of eye contact answers the question of how do you say stay away without saying stay away? Oh God, oh God. Others take steps to display a man to stand on or display strong morals and values, uh, be it political views or, or personal views, amen. They stand on and then yet some of us stand on the word, amen. But then there, there are, amen, uh, those that take a stand, amen, by distinguishing themselves. They take steps to take a stand and they fight for equal rights against racial disparities, amen. They take a stand for racial equity and access, amen. They stand against voter suppression. How many of you know that that's going on even right now? Amen. Uh, and they protest, and some, sometimes they uh, try to take steps by just taking a knee, amen. And the most egregious, amen, I think of Colin Kaepernick who took a knee for a good reason, but how many of you remember on a day in May uh, in 2020, May 25th, when uh, the officer Derek Chauvin put his knee on George Floyd's neck and killed him? So not every time when you take a stand or take a knee are you doing it for a good reason. Amen. Some people distinguish themselves in infamy such as he. And although most of us uh, most people celebrate or focus their different focus on their differences. There is a common thread that we all share in life. Uh, that is from the moment that we wake and until we finally retire for the night, we're faced with a plethora of options, uh, courses of actions that we must take. That we're faced with several alternatives and choices. But along with these choices and options uh, comes what? Decisions. And from those decisions are our lives shaped. Proverbs 3 and 6 says, in all thy ways, somebody say all. all. Acknowledge him. And he what? Yeah, he will do it. Amen. So in the morning, amen, from the time that the alarm rings, ding. Decision one, should I get up now or do I do as 57% of Americans do and hit the snooze button and say I just need six minutes, six minutes, six minutes. No, somebody said, I, I knew somebody knew. No, you snooze, you lose, amen. Then some of us, you know, then there are those menial decisions that we have to face. Uh, decisions uh, and options from what we must wear, what we're wanting to wear today, man, or whether we have time to get breakfast and get gas or, or are, or will we be forced on an impromptu fast for the day? Then we're thinking, uh, do I have enough Kroger points to get that discount, amen? And uh, then, we're de then we're debating, well, who's going to take the kids to school today? Mm -hmm. more involved decisions we're faced with, like why did I take a job across 
town so far from home, amen, with these outrageous gas prices. Sometimes we have to make a decision on, do I send my child to public school with all that's going on? Charter school, amen, for maybe the programs they may have, or do I just send them to Christian school? Decisions, decisions, decisions. What college can they get into? What will they major in? Or should I just simply tell them to go to the military? Mm. Someone has made uh, uh, has made the decision that I need to move back home and, and save some money. And, and they discovered that, you know what, it, it's, it's real out here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember when couldn't nobody tell you something, tell you anything? Amen. And uh, if you will, this is going to be just the first time. Just lean over and tell your neighbor. Amen. Look at your neighbor right now. Amen. Not the one with grown kids. But just tell them, guess who's coming home for dinner? More weighty options under consideration. Should I marry? Or should I be a serial dater? Or should I just, amen, amen, just decide to do bad all by myself? Should I grind it out by myself? Increasing in seriousness, should I work on my marriage like I have worked on my career? Do I throw my hands up and say, time's up, punch out, and leave? Leave the family shattered, amen. Leave the children exposed, amen, as they fall through the cracks, amen, and then become what? Pray to the enemy, amen. It is from these decisions that our lives are shaped and not only that, other lives are changed. Through our course of action, friendships are forged and they go up and friendships are either forged or they go up in flames. Sometime this morning or this week, you had the option to even decide where you would worship on today. And I don't know about you, Pastor, but I wish you would just join me and just give a clap for those that made Bible Way their choice on this morning. In the words of our pastor, we're back. Amen. Can you say that? Yeah. And although we are distressed and well, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're dressed good and we're shouting good on today. And somebody was trying to decide, amen, on this morning, do I have enough gas money until Wednesday and food for Monday and Tuesday? I let our lives are shaped by the decisions that we make. You know, it's serious out here, and in this pandemic, uh, many people have contemplated suicide and even homicide. And as we see, amen, on the news, Pastor, they've not, they've done more than thought about it. They've carried out the plan. But I'm going to ask you to do what I did one day. Before you make a choice, decide to choose Jesus, amen. One day I had to make Jesus my choice because I realized my decisions, amen, my decision-making skills think they were off. And, uh, and, and they don't get better just with age. They get better with change. Sometimes somebody is saying underneath your breath, hold on, Elder Rogers, amen, amen. Some of the things, amen, that have happened to me, some of the scandals that have been attached to my name that were they were not due to my decisions. But some of us are suffering because decisions were made for us. And they were made without our consent. Amen, amen. They were not, amen. Nobody thought about giving me, amen, a voice in the matter. Amen. When I was handed the paper, the options were redacted off. They were crossed out. They were blocked off. Amen. And so now here I am left with what I have. Amen. I'm left to play the hand that I'm dealt with. And you playing with a loaded deck. Amen. Uh, and when I go to work, amen, and I've... Uh, They've already plotted against me without warning and without reason. Amen. My hours have already been cut. Amen. People setting me up. Amen. By finishing the, by not finishing the project because I'm leading the project. You know they'll do it. Amen. They'll set you up, mother. 
Amen. And you wonder, you scratching your head. Now I'm doing all I can. I had this stuff set up. What happened to the fire? Don't work on a shared file. Somebody can go right in there. Amen. And just delete it all out. You got to work smart. Amen. You got to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Backing your stuff up. Sometimes decisions are made. We're suffering. And what I'm talking about, we're suffering from decisions that we didn't make. Amen. Come home in another new car in my name that I didn't sign for. Oh, then when I'm at church and people wonder why, when I cry, my eyes out. And I'm crying out my eyes and my nose. Y'all know that ugly cry, amen. When I stand up on every song and my hands go up, amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I'm giving God a real Shabbat on this morning. Yeah. Amen. Because I'm just trying to say, God, do you hear me on this morning? God, are you anywhere in my atmosphere? I just wonder if somebody really understands what I'm trying to get to, amen. Just, just things, just steps, decisions, amen, that we have to deal with, amen, in this present world, amen. Uh, uh, Psalm 73 said, amen, my foot almost slipped, except I believe to see the goodness of the Lord, amen. Some of us had to walk out of a job, amen, before we found ourselves going to jail, amen. It got so tough on us, amen. Amen, amen. And I give my gifts and my time to people, amen. I offer my money, amen. And some of us, amen, you sit there, amen, like everything is all good, amen. But some somebody had to catch a ride to church. Somebody had to walk to church, amen. And they didn't come to play patty cake, amen. They didn't come worried about, amen, what you thought about, how they put their outfit together. They don't care, amen, amen, that they're bumping into you, amen. I'm just trying to say, God, do you hear me? In the words of a song that my family like to listen to, God, can you just make it stop? If you really knew, amen, we got a, a familiar praise, amen, that we chant sometimes. If you really knew, amen, what I was going through, amen, you would do the same thing too. But I'm going to say, if you knew what I was going through, you would be crying too. Oh, I'm just good at making suffering look good. I'm, but I'm trying to hold on to my very sanity, mother. There were some decisions that were made without consulting me, and I'm paying the price for it. When your child is hurt by somebody you trusted, amen. Child services are coming to take them, amen. Some decisions were made without consulting you, amen. Just having to suffer through because uh, uh, they made, amen, they were made without you. So yes, Elder Rogers, if I'm guilty of anything, I'm guilty for being loyal to the very end. <laughs> Is that your testimony? I'm guilty of enduring that, uh, uh, that I love without limit, amen. That's what I'm guilty of on today. If I'm guilty of anything, I tried to do all I could. We're living in a time now, amen, amen, where grandparents have had to make the decision to go back to being parents. People getting hooked, addicted, amen. People just losing the capacity. They checking out, walking out, abandoning, amen, their children, amen. Amen. So many times, amen, as I sit and think, my mom, amen, I can remember times when she would just, when she would just cry, amen, because it got hard. It's hard when you don't have family nowhere near you. And listen, and I would say it's worse when you got family that you can't even depend on. So to my family on this morning, this ain't on nobody's paper. I want to say thank you. 
Thank you, amen. Thank you, Aaliyah. Thank you, Alyssa, who's not here. Amen. Thank you, amen, to those friends, to those village people, amen, amen, that have helped us, amen, along the way, amen. We don't look good just by ourselves. Amen. Thank you, Sharita, amen. She's at home recovering. Thank you, amen, to so many who have encouraged us. Thank you, amen. I'm going to encourage you to take time to thank somebody who's done something for you. Yes. Some of us, amen, are having to bear, amen, we're trying to make it and we bear stars that you see and that you don't see on this morning. And those stars are just, amen, as painful, just as real as the ones that you do see. PTSD, amen. Some of us, I think just for being black, we ought to have a degree of PTSD, amen. Just trying to keep my head up, just trying to get through the day. Just trying to keep my head up for hope's sake. Amen. Just feeling like things could change at any moment. Amen. Amen. That, that I would eventually be appreciated. Amen. That my value would, would eventually be seen. Amen. And amen. Celebrated. That's why what you did on this morning, Sister Furlow, that's why what you did on this morning goes such a long way. Amen. My father said it like this. I would rather see a sermon live any day. Than to hear one preach, amen. It means a lot when somebody show you, amen. When they show and prove, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Instead of just barking out orders to you, amen. So I ask you on today, amen, visitors and members, amen, who helped you make your decisions? When you're taking steps and can't see your way of head. From whom are you taking orders, amen? King David told us in Psalm 37, amen, and he's in his older years at this time, amen, when he penned this particular psalm, amen, because later on he says, I was young and now I'm old, amen, amen. So there's no debate about it, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. So, amen, so he's offering sage advice. He's reflected, Pastor. Amen. He's, he's recounting the times, the close calls. Amen. See, he, his life was haunted. Amen. So those of you who are just depending on the anointing, amen, and the anointing, you're going to smile. It's not so. I can't find it in the word nowhere. Because normally when you get anointed, you're anointed to have trouble too. You're anointed to get some sickness in your life. You're anointed to hit some hard times. Amen. Amen. If you're going to be effective, amen, you're going to have to, amen, the, the, the body, the work of God is going to have to be made evidence in your life, Elder. For how could you tell somebody something that you, amen, may not have ever experienced, amen. So who's helping you make your decisions, amen. Amen. So yes, he offers, King David offers sage advice. Truths that have withstood the test of time and the heat of battle, amen. Amen, amen. He's even gotten to a point, amen, where all of his enemies have been defeated. I wonder what that feels like. I wonder what that feels like for all your enemies. Because some of us, amen, are yet in the heat of the battle. That's why when I read this, it's real to me. And I want to say thank you, sir, for taking time, amen, to encourage me, amen, some two or three thousand years, amen. Truth that if heeded, amen, will help you live a long, healthy life. Because one of the first, amen, attacks of the enemy is that he comes to wear the saints out. He wants you to lose your mind, and if you can't do that, he'll settle for you a heart attack, amen. And if that don't do, that don't do it, a, a stroke will be just fine, amen. Worry and anxiety and stress be confronted. Amen. That, that's, that's his tactics, amen, to pressure you, amen, right on out the door, amen. And so just as God, amen, and so I was reminded 
that uh, I'm not the only one, amen. You're not the only one, amen, that have been in the heat of battle, that are going through stressful times because God reminded the powerful prophet Elijah, amen. Now, now imagine this. Elijah, amen, commanded that it wouldn't rain for three years, three, three and a half years, amen. Amen. It didn't rain, amen. Then Elijah, amen, calls the prophets of Baal, amen, because he said, you know what, it's time for us to settle this thing once and for all. And he challenges the prophets of Baal, tells them to come on out, amen, and let's build an altar, amen. You call on your God, and I'm going to call on my God, amen. And then after that, amen, when they called on their God, amen, and there was no answer from Baal, amen. Amen. And, and they, they cut themselves. They called. He said, talk loud. Amen. He began to just encourage them to call on somebody who could never answer them. Amen. Now, now I'm just telling you about the prophet Elijah. And then he goes on. Amen. And after that, amen, he slays those prophets. Amen. Amen. Then he, amen, later on, he finds himself, amen, out in the wilderness. And, uh, and he receives a, a word, amen. From Ahab's wife. What was her name? Amen. From Ahab's wife. And she said she's going to kill him. So how is it then that you are so powerful, so anointed? Amen. Amen. And yet, amen, you flip flop on God so fast. And you say, God, you know what? My life ain't worth it. That much, I would rather die and go on and be with my fathers, amen. But then God reminds him, I got 7,000, ain't never bowed. I got 7,000 who's never bowed to Baal. Neither have their mouths kissed him, amen. Amen. Romans 8 and 35 asks, tells us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, amen. So in Psalm 37, it provides a stark reminder of how to handle the worst of times, and, and it reassures us that better days are coming. Would you have me say that? Better days. No, 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 no. Turn to somebody else and really declare it to them. Say better days are coming, amen. Three times in Psalm 37, he said, you should not fret. Don't be bothered. Don't be agitated. The Hebrew word for that word fret is kara, amen. It means don't be burned with anger, amen. Don't let your anger be kindled. Don't live in rage. Don't live in distress, amen. And it says fret not. So tell somebody, fret not. It means no, no. Fret, fretting, that's a no, no, amen. Why are you so angry? Who are you allowing to get under your skin, amen? Who are you allowing to control your peace, amen? Fret not. That means a no-no, amen. You aren't the first and you won't be the last. What do you do when it seems like the bad guys are winning? When you see them breaking all the rules and laws, but yet they are prospering. That's what David was reflecting back to. Verse 3 says, tap into, it, it, it encourages us to tap into our relationship with God. It tells us to initiate a God moment, do something good for somebody. You know, I can remember back when my dad would say when he would get down, when he would feel the weight of the world on him, he would come right here to the church and start by making phone calls and just start calling all over the state of Arkansas, encouraging people. And when you lift others, what you make happen for others, God will make happen. Verse 4 then tells us, David says, delight thyself in also in the Lord. And that Hebrew word for tonight is all oh, dog. No. Somebody say, all oh, no. oh, no. That word means to be soft, be delicate, be dainty. I say, well, Lord, you... You, you've told us, amen, not to fret. And then you've told us to, amen, in verse 3, to do something nice for somebody, amen, to re, uh, remember our relationship with you so we can stay in character. And then you start saying, be soft, be delicate, be dainty. And David was a warrior. But that is just encouraging us to get rid of the desire to fight. Go and rediscover your joy, amen. 
Because see, you become hard, you become, amen, you become bitter, you become a wrong way, man, amen. If not, then you need to get back to being soft, amen. To ask God to give you a heart of flesh, amen. Amen. Don't allow negativity and dryness to be a part of your conversation. Hang up the phone from party pooper patty, amen. Don't sit next to negative Nancy in worship, amen. And if you can do it better, just go ahead and let them, amen. Don't worry about if they looking over you, amen. Just let them huff and puff until they pass out, amen. Ask the Lord to create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me, amen. But I really like that Psalm 37. And seven, amen. That seventh verse, it says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently upon him, amen. Fret not thyself because of him who prospered in his way. Y'all better get ready now. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. That Hebrew word, amen, amen, right there, uh, it said, it's spelled C H. U-W-L, but it's pronounced cool. Somebody say cool. cool. Yeah, so God, that, that word means to, to whirl, to dance like a religious ceremony. So just look at your neighbor and say, after I'm going through all of this stuff, amen, when I'm tired of seeing the evil, amen, the evil people progress, when I'm tired of you scandalizing my name, and I didn't do anything to deserve the scandal, Amen. When I've been ostracized and criticized, Elder White. When I'm struggling trying to make ends meet, amen. And I see you over there lying, cheating on your taxes, amen. Lying to get PPP money. Talking about you done started a business. Go somewhere and sit down. But listen, the Bible tells us in Psalm 37 and 7, it says, be cool. Tell somebody to say, be cool. That means again to dance. Do you have a dance? I said, do you have a dance? Amen. Like a dance at a religious ceremony, amen. Ah, like what we are now, amen. So even before the wicked have been cut off, amen. Even before the music, amen, is being played. When you come to church, you shouldn't wait for the music. Bring your good time with you. Because you may not ever get nobody to celebrate with you. They may scoot down a seat or two, amen. Because they don't like the way you're looking on today. Amen. But just bring your party with you, amen. Verse 23, amen, reminds us that word for man, amen, when it says that uh, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Man is defined as either boy, Everyone, man or men, or this is what I like, it says warrior. Somebody say warrior. warrior. So the steps of a good warrior, amen. Do I have any warriors in the house? Yeah. The steps of a good warrior are ordered by God. Now this is what I really discovered. It says that the army discovered one thing. Back in 2014, a study was done, and that men who walk together, amen, in profile, amen, when they move and walk together, amen, that they look more intimidating than a group of people who are out of sync. I'm telling you, your steps are ordered. Are you getting this? And then conversely, amen, the study also revealed, amen, that men also reviewed their potential opponents as less formidable when they didn't walk in unison. Now do you see why God wants us, why he orders our steps, amen. And somebody said, well, I ain't got nobody beside me, but you ordered by God, amen. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And when I'm alone, he tells me I'm his all. And when I'm alone, he reassures me that me with you is more than the world against you. Amen. And if I be for you, amen. Amen. That the enemy can come in like a flood. Amen. A thousand, amen, at your left side. Ten thousand at your right side, amen. Amen. But they won't come. They won't come nigh me, amen. Amen. When your steps are ordered, amen. 
a little bit becomes a lot. Amen. Amen. Your finances, God stretch them, don't he, mother? Amen. He can allow you, amen, amen, to still take a flight every now and then. He can allow you to still keep a new car, amen. Amen. You ain't got to bow. You ain't got to be it, amen. Amen. Just stay with the Lord, amen. Allow God to order your steps, amen. Amen. He still got a house that you didn't build for you. I just wish somebody could help me preach. Warriors have been ordered. Amen. You've been ordered. You've been appointed. Amen. You received your appointment. You've been directed. Amen. Amen. That, that word also says to make preparations. Amen. To make sure. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. I want you to make sure. Brother DJ, get that music for us. Amen. Amen. Listen, listen, listen. You've been ordered to do this, right? Amen. To make sure, to make to be placed in the right place, amen. The Bible is telling you to make ready, amen. Amen, can I rely on you? That's another word, to be reliable, amen. Now, when we go back to verse 7, amen. So, this time, amen, when it says be cool, when you dance, amen, listen to what God told me, amen. This time when you dance, you're dancing for your next promotion. You're dancing for every good seed, amen, that you have sown in tears. That you're telling God, I'm ready for my heart. That every time I've been looked over, amen, but I didn't go look over nobody, amen. Amen. Every time, amen, that for, for having a drink from the bitter cup, amen, that God is going to give you a victory, amen. Amen. And this time, instead of the bitter cup, He's going to give you a cup that's going to run over. Are you ready to shout? I said, are you ready to shout? Lift your hands right now and tell God, God, I trust you with my life. If they never call my name, if I never get a chance to stand right here, this dance is for you. Come on, one, two, one, two, ready, sing. Come on, give God a praise right there. Wait, 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 wait. This is a half-hearted praise. Do y'all not see what's going on? Kids are getting abducted all the time. You ain't made every decision right. There was some times you was late to go pick up your child when somebody else could have got them. There were times that you let them go with the coach and the coach could have had a different mind. But God! Glory, glory. But God! But God! I said, but God! Hey! 
when I said be cool, that don't mean to have no swag. Because David, amen, if anybody had a right to have swag, he was a king. Do I have any kings? No, have you been made a king right now? So if we have not been made a king or a queen, then what are we acting so swaggerific for? Why are we acting like God? God didn't just clean the dirt off us. Why are we acting like we holding this thing up on our own? Why are we acting like it ain't a real praise that we owe God, amen? Listen, David realized something, amen, that being out of the presence of God is not where he ever wanted to be. So he goes back to get the ark. Because he knows that when that ark is present, that's synonymous, mother, with the glory, with the Lord being, amen, on your life. The glory of the Lord being on your life. And what does he do? Every six steps, amen, when he go get it, mother. He, he commands them to stop, and they give God a praise dance. Not only that, they give God sacrifice. And he does it all the way back to his home, amen. And then as he gets back to his home, amen, the Bible says he danced out of his clothes. You know what I see when he danced out of his clothes? Everything that had been holding him. Everything that had been marred his name. Everything that had been binding him. Every negative, amen, every negative announcement that had been pronounced on his life. But mother, I made it on today. Against all odds, I'm still. I'm still standing. I'm still standing, Mother Gail. God ain't through with your family. God ain't through with your children. I, I can't tell you how I know it, but I know it for sure. Because I had an experience a while a week ago. God is not through with your children. Lord, if I'm making this, I'm casting all myself into it. 
to you. How could I stand, amen, if you don't help me stand? How can I, amen, get the victory except if the Bible said it's him that gives us the power to get the victory. Amen. I just want to encourage you on this morning, amen, amen, that our God is a good God. Our God is a sovereign God. And I thank him, I thank him, and I know I'm not the only one with testimonies like that. I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one got a child, amen, that they want to see saved, amen. My children are young, I want to see them saved right now. So I know when you got grown children, amen, when you got children that are displaced or separated from you, I don't care if they military, college, or whatever, if they're grown and they're just across town, you want to see them Amen, that you're experiencing, amen. Raised them and had one thing in mind, and what happened? What happened? What happened? I want to give my hat off, amen. I, I applaud you to those, amen, that are sticking in there. Mothers who have not left. Wives who are hanging in there. Husbands who are hanging in there, amen. Hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there. But listen, our God just wants you to know he has ordered every step. It's playing out. It's playing out. In that 37th chapter, he talks about the wicked so many times you almost get tired of reading it. About how much he's going to do to the wicked. It's, it's just a setup. It's just, and don't worry, because the closer the wicked get to you, they're only getting that close to you for one reason, mother. The Bible says that the wealth of the... How they going to give you the money and they all the way across town? Stop telling God to kill your enemies. Don't let them kill them until they transfer that money. Because I don't feel good taking your money. But it wouldn't matter to me once they do. Yes. God, do whatever you need to do, amen. I'm available for it, amen. And then I'm telling them, you can trust me because you can check my record. Yes. That's why God is saying, trust him to order your... Yes. Check his record. Just check his record. That's what David was reflecting on. He said, when I think about it, man, I shouldn't even be old right now. I shouldn't even probably be here, but I've never seen the righteous. How is it that you do better when God puts more of a load on you? Hold on, with less resource. Listen, nobody could ever say that I'm bragging, but I can say that I'm bragging on Jesus. I can say that every time I open my mouth and ask God for something. If it ain't a call coming in and I just say I was blessed, amen, got a call the other week, blessing. Then got another call, then got another acknowledgement, amen. Amen. Just blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings. Who else got that testimony? I cannot. Ella White, you told me that you're selling more cars now than ever before. Blessings on blessings on. The steps of a good man. Not out in the world, but in here. In here. Those who are of the call according to his purpose. The steps of a good man. Be confident in this one thing, amen, that he, amen, who has begun a good work in you, Philippians 1 and 6, shall perform. Our God, if he don't do nothing else, he likes putting on a show. That's what his glory is all about. And, I, and, and, and Isaiah said, and in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw, saw the Lord high and lifted. 
lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Try, as long as you don't, amen, try to exalt yourself above God, he'll continue to exalt you. I want to let this go, but I really want to make sure you take home. I don't even care about the shout no more. If you take it home and shout it home, it's going to be better than a shout here. Some of y'all ain't never shouted in your house. You need to go home and shout. You need to go home and shout. Because God is in control. A church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m.